Hello, 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 H
to ex uh, in exchange to share with Los Altos UCC in Long Beach. Uh, representing Mount Hollywood UCC is the Reverend Dr. Norma Nomura de Sager, sharing a message with Seaside Community UCC in Torrance, who in turn sends their pastor, Benjamin Samuel, to Altadena Community UCC, who sends their lay member, Mike Okamura, to share with Congregational Church of Northridge, who sends their tradition, their transitional pastor, uh, John Varga, to share with United Church of the Valley, uh, UCC DOC in Murrieta, who sends their lay member, Helen Lee Ortega, to share a message with Los Angeles Filipino American UCC, who sends their pastor, Jeremiah Lagahit, to preach in a joint worship service of First Congregational UCC in Paris and Faith Community UCC. Uh, who sends their pastor, Teo Tawagon, to share with Mount Hollywood UCC? So what a wonderful tangled web of vine branches all connecting our churches to Jesus, the true vine. Yes, this morning is uh, Pam Sunday, so designated by a General Synod Resolution in 1991 as the being the last Sunday of every April when all UCC churches recognize and celebrate the gifts and contributions of Pacific Islanders and Asian Americans in the life of the United Church of Christ. Uh, of course, that's, that's, that is an ideal, quite frankly, with our fierce UCC value of autonomy, uh, it's my impression that very, very few of our nearly 5,000 UCC congregations throughout the country have actually celebrated Pam Sunday since our denomination declared it as such over 30 years ago. Uh, however, uh, with the uh, pandemic and the subsequent scapegoating of our AAPI, that's uh, Asian American Pacific Islander communities, and seeing a 150% increase in hate crime targeting us uh, in that, that first year of pandemic, I am so touched that so many of our UCC congregations are beginning to stand in solidarity with us, including IUCC. Uh, I hope that you uh, make celebrating Pam Sunday, an annual tradition in your, the life worship life of your church. So in recognition of uh, Pacific Island and Asian American heritage today, uh, as well as your continued, uh, as well as your, your continued recognition of black, indigenous, Hispanic, and Latinx heritage, as well as the heritages of many, many others, encourages witness to the fuller, colorful, and diverse image of God in which we are all created. I am grateful for that prayer led by your very own Reverend Dr. Jerry Van Toglick uh, last week, which included intercessions for the safety and welfare of all Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, calling for the end of stereotypic interactions that include, uh, no, where are you really from? Uh, although I must admit, um, that's not the worst question that can be asked because in, in um, my neighborhood where I serve, uh, many people are from elsewhere and are not citizens. Uh, so when they ask that question uh, with innocence and they ask with curiosity, uh, not necessarily, and they don't necessarily recognize what an American accent sounds like, uh, an American accent on English sounds like. So the question, uh, no, where are you really from? Um, denying our dignity and citizenship. Well, when I feel that the most is when it's by a fellow American uh, with an American accent who can't seem to recognize my Midwestern American accent. Uh, no, I didn't go to Punho School like my classmate uh, Barry uh, Obama, but I did grow up watching a lot of American TV, so I, I suppose that does contribute to my American accent. 
but in keeping with uh, this morning's worship theme, much fruit, as well as today designated as Pam Sunday, I've been thinking a lot about uh, Asian or tropical uh, fruit uh, recently, and, and these kinds of fruits are, are readily available at, at our local uh, Asian supermarkets. Um, so I wanted to uh, share a few of those uh, with you, some, some, some pictures here of uh, different fruits. I wonder if you can identify what, what, what they are. Maybe I'll start with the uh, easier ones first and then see if you know what these are. Okay, you know what these are, right? Right, these are mangoes. And in all likelihood, these mangoes are from, from Mexico. Okay, I wonder if you know what these are. You probably are thinking, oh, those look like grapefruit. But uh, these are actually pomelo. Uh, I think that's the English name, but uh, uh, Japanese call it jabong. Uh, the Cantonese, we we would I grew up calling it bulu. Uh, in Thailand, we call it somo. But it's not really a grapefruit. It's bigger than a grapefruit, right? You, you can kind of compare there. That's what it looks like. That's you see that thing over there, or that that's an orange. So that's uh, somo is, is actually a pretty big citrus fruit. Okay, what about these? These are uh, longan. Long on. They're sort of like lychee. They're juicy and uh, pulpy, fresh, uh, sweet. Uh, kind of like lychee, but in my opinion, even better than lychee. Uh, so if you see them, go ahead and uh, get get your, your fill of them while they're in season. And I, I think some of you might know what these are because they are actually grown in California now. Um, dragon fruit, right? There's many varieties of, of dragon fruit. Uh, yeah, we have the uh, this this one's the uh, white flesh variety. They have the yellow flesh variety, as well as the pink uh, flesh variety. And uh, ooh, very tasty. Uh, of course, a wonderful fruit to eat because this is the year of the dragon, right? So eat your dragon fruit in the year of the dragon. Why not? Um, okay, here's one. I wonder if you recognize. This is called jackfruit. And it's huge. You can see what it's compared to an apple, What it, how big these are. And actually, in the supermarket, these are kind of the smaller ones uh, compared to the ones I, I used to see in Thailand. But um, this is one of my favorite fruits. It's it's good. The the uh, the flesh is uh, sweet, um, not mushy. It's kind of firm. And it's good in desserts, cold desserts. Uh, but if you eat it green, you, it's, it's great to make uh, curry with. So uh, that's jackfruit. And the last one I'm going to show you is uh, very notorious in Southern, or I should say Southeast Asia. You recognize what this is. This, you don't want to be under a tree when, when, when <laughs> you don't want one, one of these falling on your head. Uh, this is durian. Yeah, durian. It's not, you actually are not, it's illegal to, to carry these on trains and they're forbidden to bring into many hotels. Um, because of the pungent, uh, sulf sulfuric uh, smell, they're very. Uh, well, I guess you could just some people just say outright they're stink. Uh, but but uh, the taste, you know, if you like something that's creamy and rich, uh, this this might be the fruit for you. Um, it's very interesting. Sometimes they even say durian. It tastes like heaven smells like hell <laughs> anyway but these are some some of the fruits that uh, i've been thinking about uh recently uh, some asian uh fruits um and the rest of the message i think will be a little bit like a children's sermon i'm going to ask you do you like to eat fruit uh you know for a healthy body it's important for you to eat a variety of fruits and vegetables every day fruits are grown on trees bushes vines and other kinds of plants farmers who grow our food need to take care of plants uh, which produce fruits uh, here look at this picture so this is this is one of our church members his name is fred so look at farmer fred here he is he's actually uh let's see if i can get out of the way you can see what he's doing here he's he's trimming off some dead branches here you can see it right, right by where my arm is he's trimming off some dead branches from this calamansi tree calamansi is a filipino lime 
Yeah, it's it's not it's it's sort of sour, but it's also kind of sweet. It's really a really fragrant kind of a lime. So here uh, he's trimming off the branches that uh, don't have any fruit on it, don't have any leaves or flowers. And uh, if you trim off branches for for most plants, you trim off the 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 branches that are no that are dried up and not producing any leaves or fruit. That usually helps the plant to grow better. So. Uh, and uh, here, for example, you can see that he's uh, when, when you with uh, when you uh, cultivate your plants, you use the if it, with the right kind of soil, you use fertilizer, especially uh, in combination with water and sunlight. The plant will the calamansi in this instance here, the calamansi plant will produce fragrant white blossoms or flowers. You can you can see right here some of them, which eventually uh, bring forth um, budding fruit. And uh, before long, uh, the tree will produce fruit, uh, much fruit. So you can uh, take one of these calamansi limes and you can cut it in half and you can boost the deliciousness of your pancit, that is uh, Filipino noodles, with the tangy, sweet, squeeze of calamansi juice and you you pick them green uh if you want or if you love a more sour taste right so it's you know i'd say it's like our gospel reading for this morning as jesus compared himself to a vine and compared god to a vine grower we note that the vine grower removes branches that don't produce fruit um, Jesus was probably referring to grapes. Uh, and these branches that don't produce, that are that are cut off, um, all they're worth, as Jesus says, all they're worth is uh, throwing them away to be burned. I'm assuming to be burned, maybe to use for fuel for your cooking or for, for heating your house. Uh, for me, if, if, if I have uh, dead branches, you know, I put them in my compost pile, and they actually contribute to the soil for the for the uh, next plants that I'm about to grow. But Jesus, in, in at least Jesus' metaphor, he says uh, these dead branches they're not, they're only worth being thrown away and burned. And you know this this brings me, I guess, to the uh, sad part of of what I, how I sometimes see this story being used, this metaphor. Um, sad to say, sometimes we as people of faith, have used this metaphor against others. Uh, we have too often tried to assume God's role as the holy vine grower. And we have judged other branches. They're just as legitimate as we are. These other branches uh, that are connected to Jesus, we have judged them as unworthy to be connected to us. And we have tried to prune them off the true vine, saying, you don't belong or uh, you don't produce enough fruit, or or you don't produce any fruit, or, or you don't produce the right kind of fruit, or maybe your fruit smells funny. Uh, you belong in a compost heap. Uh, you know, those, the, the judgments that we make. Regretfully, uh, the UCC church, even in my own story, uh, the UCC church that I grew up in, in Honolulu, uh, had a, a difficult pastor congregation relationship uh, following uh, one of our pastors when he left after 18 years a beloved uh, long-term pastor uh, the new pastor that that came in uh, viewed ministry uh, very differently from the old pastor uh, unfortunately unfortunately most of the church leadership actually left over the course of the next uh, 15 years and uh, and generally after having served in leadership. Uh, and it, uh, there was an occasion when this uh, passage, this story was used in worship, the, and the metaphor of the, the vine and the branches uh, came up in the, the worship. And the pastor uh, described the many church members who had left our church as dead branches that needed to be pruned off the true vine. Perhaps the, 
pastor didn't know or perhaps didn't care that the word of his judgment would eventually reach the ears of those church members who had left and uh but were at that by then already blessing uh, other churches with their gifts and their leadership yet i believe this is uh, can be a, a word of caution for all of us as people trying to abide in Jesus, the true vine. Uh, we are all liable to live in our comfort zones and our own arrogance. And when we have judged other branches uh, of the vine as unfruitful, then we have failed to see our own bad fruit of smug self-righteousness. So it must uh, be with both a sense of utter humility and gratitude that we approach our relationship of connectedness to Jesus. When Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches, Jesus wants us to know that it is important to stay connected to him and to each other. Uh, I just want to show this picture to you. Imagine this. Grapes only grow from healthy branches of a grapevine. If we want to see fruit, that is, if we want to see good results, we need to stay connected to Jesus. Uh, not only is this how we glorify God, but staying connected to Jesus is how we produce fruit that shows that we are followers, that we are disciples of Jesus. This uh, picture that you're seeing now is a picture of a couple of my church members uh, in a recent visit to the Philippines, and they had a wonderful time uh, taking this picture in, in a vineyard in the Philippines. Uh, so uh, with this uh, I, IUCC family, God bless you all on this Pam Sunday. May you all bear the good fruit of being connected to the true vine. Thank you for all your support. Mahalo nun. Fa'afetai. Gracias. Salamat. Arigato gozaimasu. God bless you all. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for delicious fruit from your creation. Thank you for sun, soil, water, and farmers that help plants produce fruit for us to enjoy. And thank you that we can be connected to Jesus like branches on a grapevine. Help us to bear the fruit of love and peace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.